if you describe the ego, you will describe it as a fearful being of some kind that nobody seems to know where it came from. But it's really interesting. So, you know, Joseph started off with their first book saying the soul, you know, it's, it's entitled the soul's perspective of the ego, you know, and the ego is our friend. This is where we get our negative emotion, but the ego isn't, isn't, it's not the cause of the negative emotion. The negative emotion is a, a manifestation of what we are choosing. We are of a vibration that we are choosing. and welcome back to another beautiful episode of witchy wellness radio and again this is a show where you learn how your body and emotions are not in the way they are leading the way and our beautiful guest or shall i say guest plural today <laughs> is cindy edison and joseph yeah and she she is here going to share her own experience about how becoming a channeler came into her own life and a little bit about Joseph is there the evolutionary vibration of Seth and Abraham and if you guys are into this work I'm sure you've heard both of those names before and Joseph represents the vibration of the new earth and how we're moving from the physical to more that vibrational state of being and so much more there's literally endless possibilities of where this can go but Sydney thank you so much Aww. for coming to the show today so delightful to be here I'm so excited to talk to you yeah about your I... whole wellness thing because this you know what we teach is the base is wellness yeah. you know because the because vibration is the basis of everything our physical emotional our reality that we experience it's all vibrational so that's why we're here. <laughs> so thanks for having us. I You're appreciate very that. welcome. You're very welcome. And I would love to hear, I, I know it's, I'm sure a beautiful long story, but your, your, your bridge maybe version of how Joseph came into your life, uh, how you started to realize, oh, wow, that I am become hearing these messages and, yeah. and sharing this beautiful message with the world. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And it is very long and I'll I'll give you the cliff notes. <laughs> I'll start where Joseph comes in. And before that, it was probably 11 years of teaching that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't, I, wa I was being led, but I wasn't aware of it then. I, you know, I was just going with the flow kind of, but um, I was in advertising for 35 years and I sat down one night to write a newspaper article and a uh, magazine, something. And all of a sudden, I was sitting there thinking about my headline, and all of a sudden, my hands just started. You know, it sounds so weird when people say that, but that's really what happens. You know, I just, my hands just started, and it started out, um, Dear Cindy. And I kind of cocked my head, but I was so intrigued. I had no idea what was going on, but I had been led to channels throughout my whole life. And so it was, it was exciting for me, no, no fear at all. I mean, it was just, you know, what's this? I have to see where this is going kind of thing, you know? And by the time it ended, it was about, I don't know, seven, nine pages, something like that. And it was all, and I haven't read it in a while. I probably should go read it, but it was all about me. And I remember specifically, and there was a lot of info obviously in there, but specifically two things that they said in that introductory letter to me um, that I still remember today. And I, it's, it's, you know, right in my, what you might call the third eye. I don't know. It's in my awareness where they said, live it, live it, live it, live it. And we are one, we are the same. Cause of course I say, who are you? Like everybody says, you know, what's going on? Who are you? And they said, it, it, they, they started out saying, it really doesn't matter. Our answer doesn't matter. Just know we are you. And of course I was, I had no idea what they were talking about, you know, so it was really fun. So then fast forward several years, they were talking. Um, and in 2016, I think it was the beginning of 2016, I got led very, I want to say hard. They really leaned on me hard, vibrationally hard. And all of a sudden, Abraham Hicks was in front of me every single day, seemingly everywhere I turned. I had been listening to Hay House radio shows for um, when I would go to work, put my headphones on, I'm listening to the shows and Abraham Hicks, the trailer or, you know, just the ad for their show kept pop, but I had no idea who she was. 
really, because I was new to spirituality, you know, and up to this point, I was channeling on my own, but not really, you know, for myself. But anyway, they were popping in, popping in. And finally, it clicked one day after about two weeks, I couldn't see anything else. It was so cool. So then I, I went and found her show. And the first time I heard her voice or heard them, I said, you know, there's something going on here. And I, and I just soaked it up like a sponge for two years. Um, that was in actually 14 and for, so for two years. So in 16, I was chatting with my friend that had no name, had no idea. I know Jesus was in there somewhere because he started off and that's another story for the first 11 years, but he started off. So I just assumed that he was part of that because I could feel him in that, in the vibration of it, but they would never answer my question. Who, what's your name? You know? So finally, after a long time of a long time, maybe a year, or, I don't know, listening to Esther, I was uh, just chatting with them one night and they said, we are Abraham. And I started laughing. I actually laughed out loud, you know, and I said, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and they said, no, we are Abraham. And this is why all of this happened. And they started naming all the things that led me to that. And I said, what's going on? Some things I, I, I can't tell you. And I hate to say that, but I can't tell you because it's not, it's not for public yet, but it will be. But at that time, they said, this is who you are in our progression. And so for the next two years, I'm talking to Abraham and I feel them. I hear them. I hear them saying the same thing to Esther. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm kind of understanding where this is going. Well, one day, and then I'll stop. One day I had the opportunity to have a session with Paul Selig. I'm sure you know who he is, right? So I had a session with him and in the session, he, we were chit-chatting and he said, so tell me who you are. And I said, well, I'm a channel for Abraham. And he kind of went like, you know, he kind of cocked his head and he said, go on with that. And so I told him, I'm talking to this group. They tell me they're Abraham, feels like Abraham. Um, and he said, I don't think that's how it works. Um, and my heart sunk. It just sunk because I was like, wait a minute, I've been duped. You know, what is all this? And he said, let's go to the guides. And his guide said, they there is a group who is trying to teach through her and she needs to ask them for their name. And so I was very confused, kind of pissed, you know, I, I was. And so I went home, I had done that session at a friend of mine's house. So I went home, pulled out my laptop and I said, I wrote two words, what gives? And they started talking and they said, in time, we will give you our name. But we are, we had to tell you that we are Abraham because we are. And they started to explain that they are the vibration of the new earth. And that involves our understanding of the expansion of consciousness and that every realm of consciousness and we as the vibrationary, you know, aspects of this consciousness are evolving too. So of course they said, we are going to out ourselves you know, because you get a lot of flack for that, right? Because you can't imagine. I mean, I haven't gotten as much as I thought I would get yet, but um, I have gotten some. And they said, we must example who we really are. And you, Cindy, are included in the we of us. So this is part of our message is the oneness. It is the um, expansion of the human aspect, you know, and humanity into the new earth, the fourth and fifth dimensions. So that I understood. And they said, and I said, well, what about your name? And they said, we'll tell you, and this is paraphrase, we'll tell you our name when the time is right. And I said, okay, a couple days later, I'm sitting outside, beautiful day, not thinking anything. Um, I was just kind of enjoying the day. And all of a sudden I see in my mind's eye, the clearest picture you ever saw of a propeller plane. You know, you see when you're at the beach with the banners on the back of them and it's going in front of me and, and it went by and I was just, I was, I was so astounded by this. It was so clear. And the first banner behind the tail was said Seth. And the second banner said Abraham. And the third banner was blank. And they said, that's us. So I knew so much came together for me at that time. And then um, a month later, they said, we want you to go to the beach for 30 days, write the first book. 
And I did that. And um, when they signed the welcome letter to the first book, they said, we are Joseph. Yeah. So that's how, in a nutshell, that's the story. Of course, there's year, you know, it's 20 years. So there's there's been a long story, but it is the exampling of who we really are as aspects. You know, we teach about the aspects of the soul of God. And um, so we are playing the human role aspect right now. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. As soon as you said, <laughs> when they announced their name, Joseph, my third eye, my pineal gland just went, what? <laughs> just opening up. And oh, I think so many people, it, I mean, as a human experiencing life as a human, you want to know all the things right now. You want to know, you know who am I talking to? Okay. And like you said, some of the information that's coming through is not ready to be shared yet. And I hear that from so many different channels yeah. and it's because the overall vibration of the world isn't ready, but it's, it's getting there. It's getting yes. there. Yes. And like what Joseph is here to share with all of us is shifting from that physical to more of like a vibrational state of being. So could we start to talk about I mean, we kind of alluded to, you know, shifting into maybe more fifth dimensional reality. What does that mean? And what does that shift look like for humanity? Yeah, it's a good question. And a lot of people leave out that poor fourth dimension, you know, which is a big deal. <laughs> a lot of people that I left it out in the beginning until they said to me, probably, I don't know, maybe a year. And I don't even, I, you know, I can't, it's not a time thing. So it's an event driven process. So I always go, I don't know what it was, but um, they said to me one day, you've got to start talking about the fourth dimension. And I said, well, I talk about what you talk about. So start giving me the info, you know, what is it? And um, they're so cool. And so they started telling me, okay, so when we, when we look at the aspects of the soul, the soul, we refer to God as the collective soul. And um, so we as the, uh, but very unique, right? Every soul is unique to itself, but, but that's where we are all joined as one. So the, um, the human aspect is um, the vibrational aspect of our soul who is having the physical experience in the physical realm. And we've had this experience many, 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 many thousands of times. I have been here a hundred thousand times, you know, in, when I say here in the third dimension, like everybody else has in the third dimensional realm, which has unlimited vibrational timelines that we visit, right? So this version of ourselves, the version of Lauren that I'm looking at, um, has evolved from the version of you, whether you were Sam or Tiffany, you know, 5,000 years ago, you have evolved this aspect by coming and going and coming and going. And we evolve through our experience here in choosing. And we evolve by way of our soul's vibration. When we leave here, all we take with us is the love, the ex extra love that we've picked up along the way. You know, we think about it as, or I visualize it as walking through the third dimension. And every time we experience love in some way, whether it's looking at your cat, holding a baby, whatever it is, those little sparks of love, they are experienced very uniquely. And we, i um, picture it as walking the third dimension, carrying a basket and they're flowers. And I'm picking up these flowers. And those are the flowers I take back to my soul. And that's how our souls expand through our love, through the, uh, through the love of every aspect that makes up our soul. Right. And there's unlimited aspects of that too. Right. So it gets really big. So as the human aspect, we have a physical vibration that is our human makeup. It's this body, it's our beliefs, our understandings, the teachings that we hold, um, our experiences here, beliefs being really the most important one, I think. Um, but Joseph says, there's not one more important than another. Cindy. Okay. So, but all of these, our physical makeup is a compilation of the beliefs, understandings, experiences we've had in every single lifetime. That's why people use sometimes past life regression to fix a problem. You know, we have a different take on that, but that's, but that's why, because they don't know it, but they are actually shifting a part of their physical vibration to be in alignment 
with who they really are. So we today are a compilation. Our physical vibration is a compilation of every life we've ever lived, holding our beliefs and understandings and all this stuff that we've learned while we're journeying through the third dimension of contrast, right? And the contrast is in contrast to who we really are as our soul, the loving aspect, right? So that's part of our physical vibration. The other part is our soul vibration, which is the fifth dimensional and higher is the pure loving vibration. This is where our impulses come from. Every time you feel joy or love or passion, that's where that comes from. That's that vibration. So we have this blended vibration that we're kind of rolling around with, you know, and in, and we're making our choices based on um, whatever vibration is dominant within us at any given moment. So when we are out of alignment and the earth plane is the place to be out of alignment because it offers the contrasting choices that we make every single day, right? So, and that's why this is such a big subject because these beliefs that we hold are unique to us and they're based on our own experiences or what somebody taught us, you know, and um, religion, parents, you know, influential people in our lives. So the vibration of it is what we are calling out to the universe to match vibrate the law of attraction is vibrational law right so the dominant vibration rules so if you are ornery and you are uh in a vibration or or asking for we call it asking for you know esther wrote the book ask and it is given we ask vibrationally and it is given vibrationally and when we are in alignment with it it manifests so our vibration is the most important thing that we can are only in control of. Only we can control our vibration, which is our creative force. It's what we create our reality from. I don't know if I answered your yeah, question. Well, I went off it, on a tangent. But... It went where it needed to. And that's why okay, I love good. it. Like, <laughs> okay. That's why I love having these conversations. And yeah, and yeah it's so much of my journey has been through the teachings of Abraham and, you know, you hear the word contrast over and over and over again. And I heard them say something even a few months ago, I never really heard. And I was like, this makes so sense. Sometimes I'm like, I know we live in this duality contrasting third dimension, but it's like, I guess Esther was stuck in her head about, well, I should have done this differently. You know, I know, I know better than that. What, you know, why was I, doing that and abraham came in and said well that contrast being in that state was the path of least resistance to get you to you. into alignment and we just sometimes have this at least in my journey this n a negative connotation with the contrast yeah and i don't i don't believe it's that way so i don't know if you have a more no. take on that as well yeah the contrast of course now we're we are teaching the soul's perspective Okay, so there's this shift in consciousness that we're all experiencing, whether we know it or not, um, better to know it, but um, we are shifting to um, a place where, where we as the human has not been before. We're, we're on the precipice of that fourth dimension. And we'll, I want to talk about that in a minute too. But to answer your question, we come to the um, realm of contrast to experience and to uh, choose to acknowledge more of who we really are which is our soul's vibration which is the pure positive love christ consciousness call it whatever you want there's no fear there so the contrast offers choice there is always choice in every moment and we are creating in every moment so you know a lot of people say to us um, how do i know what vibration i'm carrying well how do you feel your emotions are your first indication of the vibration that you're choosing. So if you feel jealousy or anger, anything that's not love, if you feel sadness or loneliness, you are out of alignment with the vibration of who you are. That's the contrast. So in that moment, you choose because it's all in our choosing. It's just another choice. Some people say, well, it's, a, it's really hard. Well, it's hard from the third dimensional perspective of, of contrast because hard is out of alignment. So, but from the, from the soul's perspective, it's, it's just the choice that we make. And it's a vibrational choosing, which shifts our physical vibration. 
And the more we consciously choose that perspective to create from, the more our physical vibration shifts and, and morphs into the soul's dominant vibration. And that's when we're stepping into the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension is when our physical vibration is dominant in the soul's perspective, as opposed to the contrast. You can see the results and the manifestations of the contrast that's had. Always, you could always see it, but now more than ever, you know, globally, all, all of the chaos that's being created, but we are doing that, you know, we're doing that. However, there is a group of us growing bigger and bigger every day who is focusing on love and sharing these stories and sharing how to's and how do I do this? How do I make my life better? Because the more time you spend in alignment, that's the best, that's the, the most help you can be to anybody, to humanity right? Abraham teaches one in alignment is more powerful than a million who aren't. And that's why, because you're creating from a space of love. Simply put. (laughs) Yeah. Simply put. Yeah. Simplify all everything. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think for me, it's so clear once you really understand this, you it's, it's, it's so easy to tell, am I on alignment or not? And it doesn't, you don't have to overcomplicate it more than that, because I think some of us like to, you know, well, what lifetime did this come from? And it's just really just teaching ourselves, am I in alignment? Am I not? Mm-hmm. And learning, like you said, beautiful souls are coming forward in this human experience to share this wisdom. And we're all, it's just like this momentum is yeah. starting to build collectively, yes. collectively. And I know that Joseph shares the seven steps. Oh, I kind of yeah. wanted to get into that because it's, it's yeah. you know, it's a... Mm-hmm system uh, you know th- these truths that can kind of help that process so wherever you want to want to start with the seven steps maybe what we they could, are what they come through start. okay so if you read the section in the book um they start off talking about the steps to self-discovery and healing and they said that the 12 steps are you know for addicts and that people are addicted and they said we are putting these out to humanity because humanity is really addicted to fear. (laughs) You know, we're addicted to fear. You don't know how many people over 15 years that I've been sharing this with and, and trying to coach them into shifting, consciously shifting their perspective, because that's where it all starts. And they say, a lot of times they all say the same thing. I'm too mad now to do it. I'm too mad now to do it. I'll do it later. And I said, no, 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 you have to catch it. So you can feel the shift in the feeling. That's when it's powerful, when you can feel it, you know? So they said, so they give us the seven steps that are all, of course, in alignment and are vibrationally sound. We've, we've also tweaked the universal laws uh, for the fifth dimensional perspective because they too are all vibrational. Once you have the, the perspective that everything you do see, everybody's a channel, first of all, everybody When you look at something, your eyes are translating a vibration. That's all this is. You know, channeling is just translating a vibration from who you really are. It's innate in all of us. It's innate in all of us. And the fear is the only thing that keeps you away from the communication. People are afraid of it. And I go, why? It's the most natural thing we could ever do. The the language of the universe is vibration. So the seven steps are are given to us to help us shift and help us to recognize who we are. So I don't know. Do you want me to read them? Well, no, I was going to say, if you feel, if you feel like going over any of them or, or we can just move on. But I just think that, that, yeah, there are these beautiful kind of takes on universal truths that are even just reading them. You can feel that, that you can feel the truth in your, in your soul and your body. Well, you're feeling the vibration of the the alignment of them, you know, that's why we always encourage everybody to get in touch with your feelings. You know, people go, oh, it's a woo-woo feeling. No, your emotions are your um, aspects communicating with you, you know, and of course we have a whole different take on the ego too, right? The ego is a loving aspect and it has been taught to be this fearful you know, fearful thing that the human has to deal with that causes us to 
make these horrible choices and it puts all these things in our mind and it's such an out of alignment teaching it is a long teaching we've been hearing this for many eons of time which is another thing you know people go no i believe this well i know you believe it but your belief is out of alignment because it is spouting fear and it's also telling you that i'm sorry i'm getting off on a tangent i do this a lot sorry but it's also telling you that something outside of you is making a choice for you and that's out of alignment because you know that's saying that's blame so blame comes into it if you describe the ego you will describe it as a fearful being of some kind that nobody seems to know where it came from but it's really interesting so you know joseph started off with their first book saying the soul you know it's it's entitled the soul's perspective of the ego you know and the ego is our friend this is where we get our negative emotion but the ego isn't isn't it's not the cause of the negative emotion the negative emotion is a, a manifestation of what we are choosing we have a, of a vibration that we are choosing and the ego because the soul will never give us negative anything because it's out of alignment right so the soul gives us joy and peace and love and passion excitement all the good stuff and then so how do we know when we're out of alignment you know we experience negative feelings and we we tend to blame people and blame situations but we're actually doing the choosing right you're choosing to focus there you're choosing to have that belief and when you have a belief that's out of alignment and we all do because we've been in third dimension for eons when you have a belief that's out of alignment there are unlimited tributaries that come from that belief i mean think about just the belief that you are unworthy now that affects every single part of your life and your relationships, your job, you know, the, your self-love, self-care, everything. It, so every out, you cannot, you can't create an in alignment situation, emotion, anything from an out of alignment position, which is why we talk about this so much, so important to get a handle because we are responsible for everything. So everything you read about Joseph is all about self-responsibility because it's all vibrational and you're the only one that can choose your vibration. You know, it's a circle, but it all comes back to us. So that's where the seven steps come in. Um, you know, the first one, I'll just read the first one. Um, I am the creator of my own reality and the higher power I seek is within me. Now, if you read the 12 steps, you know, this is I forgot what it was because I had only read them when they gave me this stuff. And I said, I got to see what he's talking about. But um, the, we create our own reality vibrationally by focusing and intending and calling to us the manifestation, right? And the manifestation of our physical reality is what we are calling from the universe. This is, And the universe lovingly gives us the exact match because it says, I know you know how this works. So I'm going to give you what you're asking for. And we go, uh-oh, you know? So yeah, it's a vibrational, you know? So, and the higher power I seek is within me. What we mean by that is, is within my vibration. It's within my reach. It's within my knowing. It is who I really am. You know, it is who I really am. But these are all, these are vibrational, you know? So I know I'm rambling. I'll let you. No, it's be beautiful. I mean, like I, I said, it's, you know, we come on here and it, it is channeling, tapping to that vibration and yeah. just allowing whatever needs to unfold, whatever needs to be said and heard by everybody now and in the future listening yeah. to this, it's, it's gonna, yeah. it's, Thank it's you. all happening at the right time. Yeah. And I love what you said and what Joseph says about ego's not a bad thing. Because I think even in personal development and spirituality, we start to poo poo on that aspect. And it's all about only high vibe, only, you know, the, and the ego is this bad, ugly thing. But I, I that's why we're here. It's schoolroom earth. It's like Dolores Cannon would say. It's, this is like, we need both those aspects to learn. Because if it was just, yes, How would just, you know? yeah, you would know. You wouldn't know. And just the fact, like, where does the negative emotion come from? You know, we yeah. know that, well, I hope we know that the, uh, the, the joyful, you know, the, our, our soul's vibration, who is really the biggest part of us, you know, I think Abraham says like 99% of our vibration, but we don't look at it. So we're out of alignment. So of course, whatever we're looking at is what we're focused on, you know? So, um, <laughs> 
the creative part of this, if you, since the soul is not going to give us any negative indication, we call them indications, where does it come from? So the ego steps forward and says, I'll do it for you. You know, I'll tell you, I know the terrain there. I'll tell you when you're out of alignment and they hold up warning signs, warning signs, how I feel, how, you know, because if you focus out of alignment, a lot of people suffering with this always have always will until they understand and shift. Um, if you are focused on your health and wellness, but from a, from a, an out of alignment perspective that the body is this horrible, I need drugs. I need all these things that you know, then you make yourself sick. And that's why you need the drugs because it's out of alignment, you know, so anything out of alignment. So your wellness stick is a vibrational one. Body heals itself. The body has, Jesus told us this over and over and over, you know? So the ego is very important um, in our, to recognize as the loving aspect of the soul. Every aspect of the soul is created from love. So the ego, make him your friend, <laughs> Oh my God, you know, I'll tell you a little story. Um, uh, the a visual they gave me in a meditation when this whole ego thing started and they, it's the down by the river story. And they said, um, and I was, I was in this great, uh, we were talking and they said, okay, we want you to visualize um, a wide river. And I had recently been to Madison County and in, in out and in, out West and I went fly fishing and it was just beautiful. It was so beautiful. And so I pictured myself there and they said, now walk down and sit on the riverbank. And um, as I did that, they said, now look to your left. And I looked to my left, no, my right, sorry, look to your right. And it was my soul sitting there. It was Joseph sitting there hanging out. And so I looked to my right and it was my ego. Now these is vibrational. Okay. It was my ego. And the three of us were having a great time sitting on the, uh, sitting on the riverside. Right. So they said, now look directly at the river. And when I did, I see all of these red and white balls, like balloons, and they were flowing in the river and bouncing up and down all over the place. And they said, and, and my soul said, the red balls are out of alignment thoughts. The white balls are in alignment thoughts. Choose something. Choose what, there's no judgment. Just choose something. Well, the red balls were so pretty. They were shiny. They looked like Christmas balls, you know, they were so shiny. So I reached in, didn't even, didn't even register what they said. And I reached in and I pulled one out and then I started collecting them. All of a sudden, all I could see were the red balls because that's where my focus was. So I'm pulling them. And as I'm pulling them, I'm feeling this nudge on my left side, nudge, nudge. And I'm like, what, what, what? As I'm pulling these and making a fruit bowl or something, right? So Finally, I get this stab and it hurts in my left side. And I looked at my ego. My ego said, the more of those red balls that you choose, you are creating a pathway for yourself that you are not going to like, and it's going to feel like this. And it hurt. And they said, and he said, put the balls back, choose something else. Didn't say what to choose, just said, choose something else. So as soon as I let them go, they flew up and they, they joined their realm again. And I chose a white ball. The pain was gone. All of a sudden, the white balls were like these iridescent balls of just love. And I was just, I couldn't get enough of them. And I looked over at Joseph and they gave me a high five. And they said, doesn't that feel better? And they said, you know, and of course. So that was a great visual for me that the, the ego is giving us the negative emotion. That's where that feeling comes from, but not to hurt us. We are doing the choosing that is, and when you choose out of alignment, you get out of alignment manifestations, beginning with your emotions, beginning with your feelings. And if you continue, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Whatever you focus on expands. So that's my ego. It's my ego story. And I'll tell you some of the people who have shifted their belief about the ego, because that's all it is. It's a belief. That's all it is. That's all anything is, because we can believe anything we choose. So when you have a belief that's out of alignment, in alignment with the third dimension, it's perfectly placed, but we don't move forward into um, a higher realm with any beliefs or any understandings that we carry within our vibration because we will not be a vibrational match to where we're going. And that's what causes manifestation is vibrational agreement. Wow. Well, mic drop on that one. That's beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful visualization yeah. to 
was to really feel and experience and see that. And yeah. I think, I guess my, my next question is, I know for me, it's like Abraham talks about step five of appreciating the contrast. Yeah. yeah. And as we are shifting, in case they don't forget the fourth dimension through the fourth dimension and into the fifth and really into this new earth vibration long-term, yeah. the contrast is going to kind of keep coming up, but it's, It'll be you less. know, it'd be less. And when you refer to this step five, it's like you appreciate, you understand this new belief about what the ego really is and what that contrast really is and that it's happening for you. Yes. It's not something. You well, it, it's not even, you know, I mean, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. And that's absolutely true. And it, it does get less because it doesn't get less. We carry less of it within yes. our vibration. And so we're not attracting it as much anymore, you know? So that's the thing. If you are attracting, you can tell, you can look at people's lives, you know, your friends and stuff. And if they're yeah. miserable, I have some miserable friends, you know, all they do is complain all the time, all the time, like look, shift, shift out of that. Why do you, yeah. why do you want to live like that? You know, why do you want to live? So um, it's, so it's a choice of all of that. Yeah. So when you start to shift beliefs, like the belief in the ego, mm -hmm. your reality, your reality is created from your beliefs, your focus and everything. So when you start to shift, you will recognize and experience that shift in your physical daily life, which is the point, yeah. you know, it's, it's the whole point, but the appreciation of the contrast is important too. And it's really the understanding of us as a vibrational being, because there's no, the universe isn't doing anything to us, you know, blame out of alignment. Nobody's doing anything to us. And that's how aware you have to be. So when you recognize that the contrast is there for your choosing, but so is the love, everything is there for your choosing. That's all we do is to choose. Joseph said um, one day, they said the umbrella and they're, they were with these umbrellas, they're always throwing umbrellas around and with the, umbra the umbrella purpose of humanity in this lifetime is to recognize and acknowledge their choosing ability because we are choosing and because the choosing is vibrational and we create everything vibrationally. So the contrast, when you, when you start to say that's, you know, when you start to say the contrast is a good thing because it's, it's allowing me to recognize the choice I am making. That's what it does. It just exists. And when we're looking at it, we feel it just like when we're looking at love, we feel it. So it's all, it's all emotional, vibrational stuff you know, and as we move forward and we consciously, it's a conscious choosing, it's a conscious journey this time around, you know, we are moving um, all of the lifetimes we spent in the third dimension. We have been shifting our consciousness. There's always a shift in consciousness. This happens all the time, but it has always been a shift into another realm of the third dimensional timeline, a lesser contrasting if you've been evolving and we all are have, you know, um, but now as we stand consciously in front of this fourth dimension, we have the opportunity to consciously create a new physical experience for this aspect that is dominant in love and not fear. That's the whole point. And then Joseph says, it's all downhill from there, because once you dominantly begin to attract love, it's, it's like, you know, one day you're at 51% in your blended vibration. And then you start to recognize it. And pretty soon, you know, you want to buy a red car three days in all you see are red cars, right? So you're at 51% and you're stepping into the fourth dimension. Then you're at 55, then you're at 65, then 80, because all of a sudden you're recognizing and you're choosing it consciously. And that's when you step into the fifth dimension, when your physical vibration is a hundred percent and we will be physical there. There are there are societies living that are physical now, but we will not have this physical body. You know, it will be a vibrational creation from that physical realm. And it'll be very different, you know, like everything will be for us, but we have to walk it, you know, we have to choose it. So contrast is good. Yeah. It just yeah. makes us responsible. And a lot of people are, you know, are don't want to be responsible for their choices. Yeah. And it's about, That's like you said, remembering that we create, we are the creators of our reality we yeah. are sovereign beings and that's 
what it takes, yeah. I think, to remind us is that's yeah. why the ego is here. And that's yeah. it's just such a beautiful message. And I know it's always what I need to hear because that's been my lesson as of late is oh, yeah. the yeah. the deeper levels of that victim coming, you know, the coming yeah. up of, of like, oh, like, you know, I, I forget that I create my reality. And it's like, yeah. you know, this is coming up to remind me yeah. this. And yeah, such a yeah. Beautiful, beautiful way to, to kind of start to close the conversation today. And now we can probably talk for oh, a lot. Could, I could go on forever. A yeah. lot longer. But I think yeah. that's a good way okay. to wrap everything up. But yeah. was there anything that you wanted to, like closing statement or anything you feel called you want to talk about before we start to close the show out? Well, I just want to um, convey to everybody how how loved and we all are all of us are so loved by our soul they can't do anything but love and so we would say you know a lot of people say oh i'm a i'm a baptist but i'm not practicing or i'm a jew but i'm not a practicing jew or me i was a catholic but i'm not a practicing cat we walk around saying we are practicing souls we are practicing souls so be a practicing soul and and you know the what would jesus do turn it into what would my soul do? Take the fear out and act from that perspective. Yeah. Just be kind. Yeah. Just be kind. Yeah. Just oh love. Oh my gosh. Just There's love. nothing else. Yeah. That's all it is really. Well, thank you. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Sydney, for so much for coming on mm -hmm. and, and Joseph. And it was such an honor to experience oh. this vibration with everybody because this is this is who we all are and i'm so are. glad yeah. that we can ripple this vibration out through this yeah. platform and just who you know just being that vibration every single day but thank you so much for coming thank on you. here today so and appreciate it oh you're so welcome how how might we as the listeners it's a huge act of gratitude be of service yeah. for you guys in return today paying it forward you know, I have done so many interviews and no one has ever said that. And so I'm kind of overwhelmed and <laughs> verklempt. Um, Just love. That's the only thing that we would say. Just love and focus on your own alignment. Focus on your own alignment because we do more good for all of humanity by being in alignment ourselves. We would, if, if you see, or if you felt somebody walk by you on a busy street that was in alignment, you turn around and follow them because it's a powerful, it's a powerful vibration. It's just wonderful. So focus on your own alignment and, and just serve everybody. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Lauren. I appreciate it. Thanks.